Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and we've got a lot to cover, and I'm gonna see if I can do this whole thing in one single take. So, let's get straight into it. Helps if I hit the button for the transition. <laughs> Uh, now, so we've had a suggestion for a new logo and a new theme and a new design for Digibyte. I hinted this yesterday on a post on YouTube and we've got it now and it's all published. This was given to us by one of the community members. They've gone and submitted it for us for inclusion with Digibyte version 8. Now, this is not final in any way, but what I'll do is I'll show you uh, the medium post that accompanied it. So Spiral's basically, I've been talking with them actually since 2019. They first came to us and basically said, here is a new design idea. Now, unfortunately, back in 2019, we'd only just done the 2018 rebranding. So it was a little bit, a little bit too early and things like that. But in talks with them, they basically said with version 8, with Digibyte version 8, let's bring it up. Uh, with Digibyte version 8, we need something that's going to accompany the magnitude of this core wallet and really breathe some new life into the project and I think that's what they've done that's what they set out to do and I think it looks absolutely fantastic not gonna lie my first impressions weren't quite as great but it really 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 rapidly grew on me and I mean frankly I mean I don't know if you can I've, if anybody's gonna be salty about the logo changing I kind of think that with it tattooed onto me, there's, what, like three other people that I know of that have that, you know, we, we got a little bit of right to be hesitant about that kind of thing. So maybe I need to get the whole trifecta now, like the the first one from 2014, the 2018 one, and this one. Anyway, um, they came to us and they basically said, we want to, we want to offer this, this not just a, a logo, but the whole entire theme and the branding to go with it and accompany it. And I think that's quite cool. So as I've said in here, I say it in a couple of different places, but somehow this still ends up being glossed over. Thanks, Jared. This design will naturally be subjected to the community's feedback and input as part of our contribution guidelines. As mentioned in my last Medium article, Barry has advised that he's happy to work on an implementation of this for the Digimite Core Wallet and will include it for consideration by the community. So, on GitHub, I actually have got this one open because I talk about it here and I talk about it and when I scroll down, it's slightly underneath it. I mentioned specifically what the fundraising and everything was for, and I mentioned that he's happy to include a bit of a UI redesign for us. So, that's cool. Now, uh, carrying on a little bit, we're going to skim down. This is what it's like now, the, the Digibyte with the D. All lowercase took me a little bit to kind of wrap my head around it, but I got there in the end. Uh, we've got a mock-up here for what Twitter would look like. We've got some of the buttons and things, which I think is super cool too. Uh, I love it. I think that it looks slick. I think it looks... Like, I, I want that on my phone. I really do. Sorry, getting dry mouth. We need a drink. Cup of tea from a Digibyte cup. You know what? Um, let's take a quick look. So, uh, we've got here, it's up on GitHub. It's all free, licensed, and things like that. You can download the PDF. Uh, I've also gone and donated directly to Spiral for this. So, thank you, Spiral, for all the hard work, all the effort that's gone into this. We've got brand guidelines. Now I'm gonna fly through this because otherwise I'll literally be here for like half an hour. We have everything when it comes to the brand guidelines. We've actually got a really nice kind of summary and an introduction to it all. We're gonna keep going down though. Uh, this is the golden ratio and the Fibonacci circles or something, I think, if memory serves me right. Anyway, uh, it goes into the original, how it was created. Uh, the logo there itself, we're going to keep going down, keep going down, uh, and a whole lot of different colors. If you like it in blue, cool, there's one in blue. Actually, it's not blue, the background's blue, but you can inverse them. They go into this later on. We keep going down, keep, yeah, here we go, we've got just the text if you don't want the logo. We've got the logo and the gradient with the background being the gradient and the foreground being solid. We've got the logo being the gradient and the background being solid. We can keep going down, come on, we've got the blue digibyte. If you're set on, on, on that, then cool. I think that's, that's your call. Um, now again, like I mentioned though, I'm, I'm just going to keep going through this. This is submitted for inclusion as part of the core wallet community is going to get to have their say. This is not official. This is not done. This is not set in stone. This is submitted for inclusion in keeping with the, uh, what's the word? Contribution guidelines. Now, for all you Americans, especially who I know don't like being told what to do, um, 
that's cool. This is not what's happening here. You will get a say in this. Unlike what happened actually with the 2014 and 2018 logo, this time around, you get a say. Uh, so we're going to carry on. We'll keep going down. I think this is really quite cool. Uh, Digibyte accepted here. Now we're going to get more of these. Spirals said that this is basically kind of like a first submission uh, to get people talking about it and things like that, get people discussing the inclusion of it to make the version 8 launch special. These, I think, would be super important. A lot of people are familiar with Johnny Litecoin. Dude is amazing when it comes to going out and getting, getting physical businesses and retail stores to accept, well, both Digibyte, but especially Litecoin. And so oftentimes you'll see Digibyte accepted here and that kind of thing. Uh, this specifically goes into, you can do it in all white for use on commerce doors and windows and things like that. Uh, again, the, the Twitter proposal, we'll keep going down because we've got a whole lot of sizes, the spacings and things like that. There's 51 pages of it. Uh, there's all of the different colors of the gradient, the typeface. Let me quickly go back to this. This is quite important. The typeface here is open source this time. We're free to use it. And I think that's really, really important because last time I don't believe that it was. Um, we've got the colors, some examples and things like that, bolds, uh, the actual color scheme and things, the gradient, we will see the angle of the gradient. I kind of like that one with the black on the background there. Uh, there we go, 43 degrees for the gradient, yep. Uh, which is really helpful if you are doing, uh, like websites and other such things. Uh, the summary, carrying on, and we're at the end, cool. Now, I want to talk about a couple of things really quickly. We've currently got two logos. This is one of the things that I've seen a lot of people have complained about specifically is no, this is going to detract from our branding, which is ironic given that we have been kicked out of the top 100 on coin market cap. We're sitting at like 106 or something like that, 103, I don't know. It goes up, it goes down, whatever. The branding is disappearing as it stands right now, which is really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. Um, but we've currently got, this is iOS on the left here, and this is Android on the right here. For all of the experts though, nobody's mentioned anything about this at all, and I don't know why. Nobody cared about this before. Is it really that big of a deal? I really don't think so. But anyway. Uh, what's been really cool though, Crypto Bantam. Uh, I sent a message yesterday, basically said, hey man, we're looking at doing this for version 8, and actually that's why it's called version 8, is because we're going to submit it as part of the version 8 pull request for inclusion, and for people to discuss and vote on and decide yes or decide no. Again, totally within your rights. And in fact, even if we decide yes, nothing's stopping you from using the old one. Whatever happened to permissionless blockchain? Like, we kind of forgotten about that. Which is ironic, given we're supposed to be faster, more secure, and forward-thinking, but we're not forward-thinking enough to embrace being permissionless. That's ironic, isn't it? Go us, did you buy it? But anyway, I contacted Crypto Bantam. I said, hey man, this is what we're looking at doing. We want the version 8 launch to be something special, because we're going to be doing a whole lot of really cool stuff. We're going to be... Like, at the moment... So, so the infinite supply needs fixing. We'll come to that soon. Uh, SHA-256 gotta go. It is our biggest security weakness. It's a problem right now. It really is. It is a problem right now. Needs to go. We're looking at, so back in 2017 was the last time that we had a CPU and a GPU mining algorithm. Everything's been a success with the exception of Otocrypt being FPGA. Now bringing back GPU and CPU mining will allow, number one, we're going to sort the security problems. Number two, KYC free obtaining Digibyte. Number three, broader distribution of the Digibyte asset, and number four, broader decentralization of the mining as a whole. Those are huge points, just on their own. So I think this is why it's really important that we start showing version 8 as being important, and this is why I'm excited about this idea. Now I really like these, actually my wife as well, she came past before when I was prepping for this, and she's like, damn, that looks really cool. Um, Unfortunately, that means I've now got to also buy her one. This last one's grey though, compared to the other ones being white and black, but anyway. So I'm ordering myself some, I'm buying one for my wife as well. Um, she likes them. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm behind it as well. I think it looks really cool, and I'm excited. I'm excited about the idea that we can really differentiate version 8 from years gone past, if you know what I mean. It's not just the same. We are visually refreshing things. And I think as well as part of that, we can really show that we're, we're refreshing a whole lot more than just bumping a number, if you know what I mean. So, 
Really, really excited about this. Uh, really quickly, a bit of an update here on the infinite supply fix. Really disappointed, though, that people are still not acknowledging that it actually happens. Uh, sorry, that it, there is actually no hard cap. Don't know why. But at this point, uh, despite asking four times today, Jared still is not able to show the code where we have a hard cap of 21 billion. Uh, I would encourage you to ask him, because he seems to be ignoring me every time I ask him. Says he'll answer all the questions on Telegram. Won't answer it. Whatever. Anyway, uh, going down. So we've got some feedback here from JNS Chalk, which was really quite cool. Um, this was done based on their code. They wrote a testing application, which was really cool, which goes through and tests everything. Huge shout out to them. Thank you. Very grateful. Uh, now, they've even made a commit here, block subsidy test fix. They've fixed the unit tests, which is super cool. Excuse me, need some tea. Hey. Um... Because the irony of here saying, please go back and non-developer, fix it more. I'm not a developer. Being told by developers to go away and fix things, not helpful. Not welcoming. Not collaborating. That's why Joe's been mad the last couple of days. But anyway, so, JNS Chalk has come along. Huge shout out to you, dude. I'm really grateful for everything. Really grateful for our talks and things we've been having on Gitter. You're, you're a really good dude, and I really appreciate that. So thanks, man. Um, they've gone and actually done the block subsidy test fix. They've fixed it up so that now it will actually compile. And if we go down... Um, who else is... Oh, they're actually even now. So... JNS Chalk has been working on fixing the supply curve as well as helping out with the capping of the supply at 21 billion. Uh, also, a bit of a shout out here for Gary, not to be confused with Barry, and both of them are Australian too, which makes life really, really difficult when you're trying to figure out which one you're talking with, but that's probably just me, whatever. Um, thank you to Gary for coming along and helping out and actually reviewing this as well. Really, really appreciative of that. Uh, but where was I going with this? There is a... Have we got the tick? We don't. It's not showing here. Here we go. The tick here showing success. So, big thank you to JNS Chalk, because now, thanks to you, it passes all of the unit tests, the unit tests work, and things like that. Uh, GTO90 has rightfully said, well, maybe we should add some more. I agree. Um, so, what happened is, back in the day, Jared approved Yoshi's original unit test changes, the unit test changes confirmed, we have no supply cap. The irony that Jared confirmed that, but still won't acknowledge it. Mind blowing, but whatever. Um, and we need more unit tests, so the unit tests to confirm at certain points along the path just how much we have, as well as confirming that supply cap and things like that as well. I think it's gonna be really quite important. Um, so big shout out to JNS Chalk. You've been amazing, dude. Thank you so much, really appreciative. And I think we're probably gonna call it there. So that's going to be all from me for today. Hope you've enjoyed this. I know we've kind of gone on a little bit longer. Thank you if you have made it to the end. If you do have questions, if you do have other submissions that you want to give to the Digimite community, your own branding and guidelines and theme and things like that, make a pull request, put it in there. So this is why we're basically getting it out at the moment is because... Barry has not yet included this in the core wallet. We're going to include it in the core wallet, make the pull request as part of the contribution guidelines. People can decide, do we want it? Yes. Do we want it? No. And even if the majority of people decide yes, but you don't want to use it, don't use it. That's totally cool. It's completely up to you. You can even use the 2014 one, uh, like those other guys did uh, just this week when they were doing their YouTube video review of the Dubai. If you want to use it, we're a permissionless blockchain. Embrace that more. That's what we're supposed to be about. Hit me up in the comments, though, if you do have questions. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video. We'll see you soon. Cheers.